<laughs> so we will we will come to uh, uh, you know another example that is your example 7 so it is it is given that an overhead line is connected in series with a cable the overhead line has an inductance of 2 milli henry per kilometer and capacitance of 0 0.01 microfarad per kilometer the cable has an inductance of 0.25 milli henry per kilometer and capacitance of 0 0.102 mi mi microfarad per kilometer. Now, if a shard having a maximum value of 100 kV travels along the overhead line towards its junction with the cable, calculate A the surge impedance of the line and cable, uh, just hold on, then <coughs> then your b the velocities of wave propagation in the line and cable and c the reflected and transmitted waves of voltage and current at the junction right if the 100 kb charge originate in the cable calculate the reflected and transmitted waves of voltage and current at the junction so solution how we'll do this first you have to uh, compute the charge impedance of overhead line you know first say overhead line say it is z 1. So, z 1 is equal to root over l 1 upon c 1, l 1 is given 2 milli henry. So, it is 2 into n over minus 3 and c 1 is given 0 0.01 microfarad. So, it is 0 0.01 into n over minus 6 to the power root over. So, to the power half if you calculate it will be 447 ohm right. Similarly, surge impedance of the cable z 2 is equal to root over l 2 upon c 2 and L 2 is 0 0.25 into 10 to the power minus 3 because it is 0 0.25 milli henry and C 2 is 0 0.102 microfarad. So, 0 0.102 into the power minus 6 to the power half in square root. So, it is 49.5 ohm right. So, surge impedance first you have to compute surge impedance of the cable as well as surge impedance of the overhead line right. Next is that velocity of the wave in the overhead line you know that say it is uh, your uh, this gamma 1 we know that 1 upon root over L 1 C 1 right. So, it is 1 upon L 1 and C 1 L 1 was milli handy. So, 2 into the power minus 3 into 0 0.01 into the microfarad. So, into 10 to the power minus 6 to the power half. So, it is coming 2.24 into 10 to the power 5 kilometer per second. Similarly, velocity of the wave in the cable 2 it is given as 1 upon root over L 2 C 2 <coughs> is equal to 1 upon 0 0.25 into 10 to the power minus 3 into 0 0.102 into 10 to the power minus 6 because this is 0 0.25 milli handy. So, multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3 and this is microfarad. So, multiplied by 10 to the power minus 6 to the power half it is coming 1.98 into 10 to the power 5 kilometer per second right. After making all this now waves originating in overhead line first right when the waves originate in the overhead line and travels towards the cable we will have z 1 is equal to 447 ohm and z 2 is equal to 49.5 ohm right. Now, it is given the incident voltage in the overhead line it is given 100 kV this data this data this data is given that it is maximum value of 100 kV travels right. So, so incident voltage of the overhead line that is V f is equal to 100 kilo volt. Now, therefore, incident current right in the overhead line I f is equal to V f upon z 1 this all relationship we know. So, it is 100 kb. So, make it volt 100,000 by 447 ohm that is 223.7 ampere. Now, transmitted value now line to cable transmission factor that is refraction coefficient for voltage we know that tau V 1 that it will it is actually 2 z 2 upon z 1 plus z 2 this we have seen earlier. So, z 2 is for the impedance of the cable. So, 2 into 49.5 divided by 447 that is that z 1 surge impedance of the overhead line and z 2 is the surge impedance of the cable. So, 49.5 that is actually tau v 1 is coming 0 0.1994 right. Similarly, transmitted voltage in the cable therefore, v is equal to it will be tau v 1 into v f. So, this tau v 1 is 0 0.1994 and V f is equal to 100 kV. So, it is 19.4 kV right. So, line to cable transmission factor for current the tau I 1 we are making it 
it is line to cable transmission for current only it will be tau i 1 will be 2 z 1 that, that is your uh, upon z 1 plus z 2 that is 2 into 447 divided by 447 plus 49.5 that comes 1.8006 at least at, actually earlier we have seen that tau for uh, your reflection factor for the reflection refraction coefficient for the voltage and for the current is how it is 2 right basically tau v 1 plus tau i 1 is equal to 2. So, if you add these two 1.8006 and 0.1994 it will become 2. So, once you calculate this there is no need to calculate this one directly you can find out tau 1 is equal to 2 minus T v 1 that will give you the same value right. But for your understanding I have just make it tau, 1, tau i 1 is equal to 2 z 1 upon z 1 plus z 2 hence it is 1.8006. But earlier we have proved that tau v 1 plus tau i 1 it is actually 2. So, we find out one another one to get that subtract from 2 right. So, that is 1.8006 therefore, therefore, transmitted current in the cable i is equal to tau i 1 into i f that is tau i 1 is 1.8006 into 223.7 right because i f is equal to we have computed 223.7 ampere. So, it is actually 402.8 ampere. So, alternatively alternatively what you can do is look for checking other way you can do it i is equal to v upon z 2 z 2 is the surge impedance of the cable and refracted voltage is actually we got 19.94 kV just we have got it. So, make it in volt divide by 40 49.5 you will get 402.8 ampere same this is alternate cal calculation right the way you want you can do it. So, alternately v upon z 2, but v is the here your refracted uh, that your uh, what you call this refracted voltage this one this one the transmitted voltage right or refracted voltage whatever you call that is 19.4 kV. So, so it means same thing you will get this is and the same thing you will get either this way you can compute or directly you can compute this way. Now, reflected values now reflection factor for voltage we know the formula for voltage it will be z 2 minus z 1 upon z 1 plus z 2 this we have seen earlier. So, z 2 is equal to 49.5 and z 1 is equal to 447. So, 49.5 minus 447 uh, divided by z 1 plus z 2. So, 447 plus 49.5 that comes actually minus 0 0.8006. Therefore, voltage reflected the overhead line that V b is equal to rho V 1 into V f. So, it is minus 0 0.8006 into 100 k V it is. So, minus 80.06 k V. Now, reflection factor for the current it will be just uh, your what you call negative of this one negative that means it will be 0 0.8006 we, we have seen earlier if, if, it, if this is negative then for current it will be positive. So, it will be z 1 minus z 2 upon z 1 plus z 2 actually it is minus rho V 1 it is equal to 0 0.8006 right. So, once you get this then that current reflected back in the overhead line that I v will be is equal to minus V b upon z 1 is equal to minus in bracket minus 80.06 upon 447. So, 179.1 ampere right. So, now, and, and the diagram voltage and current distribution it initially the traveling wave 100, 100 kV, but voltage 80.06 is reflecting back right this one, this one that is your minus 80.06 kV. So, ultimately resultant here V will be your this is that your what you call that uh, j, this the overhead line this is kV and this is the junction right. So, I made it like this. So, this is your 19.94 kV. Similarly, for the current that 223.7 by reflected current was your this much your here it is here it is 179.1 ampere. So, it is actually 223.7 plus this height is your 402.8 ampere. So, this is your current wave and this is your voltage wave right. So, volt this is actually I have marked as a figure 17. So, this is that current and voltage wave form right it is a step function we have considered right. Once uh, this uh, transient over voltage is over, so next we will come to your what you call that insulation coordination right. So, first thing is 
that basic impulse insulation level in short we call bill b i l right so reference your insulation level expressed in impulse crest that is the peak voltage right with a standard wave not longer than 1.2 into 50 microsecond this we have seen earlier right that is crest value or peak value reaches in 1.2 microsecond and 50 percent of that reaches in 50 microsecond right so that is we call that is 1.2 into 50 microsecond wave right so that means insulation level expressed in impulse crest peak, peak uh, or peak value with a standard wave not longer than this one i mean 1.2 into 50 microsecond right wave it is determined by test made using impulses of 1.2 into 50 microsecond waves so actually this is very you know uh, this is uh, st recommended but in reality when you will try it may not be exactly this uh, 1.2 and into 50 but around that around that value it will be there right so uh, particularly for transformer impulse test if you do so you may not get that ideal value but this is the standard you have to see around that only so bill that is your basic impulse insulation level usually defined as a power unit of maximum value of the line to neutral voltage right that is for example say for 340 kV line suppose 340 kV say it is 1 pu is equal to first this 345 by root 3 so line to neutral you make then multiplying by root 2 that means the peak value so it will be 282 kV that is 1 pu per unit for a example 340 if it is a 345 kV then 345 by root 3 is the your line to neutral voltage that is phase voltage and multiply by root 2 so it will be its peak value that is 282 kV so that suppose if you have <laughs> bill of 2.7 pu that means 2.7 into 282 that will give you because 1 pu is equal to 282 kV so that will give you 760 kV right so this is your idea of basic your your impulse insulation level now next one is withstand voltage right therefore the bill that can be repeatedly applied to an equipment without any flashover then disruptive charge puncture or other electrical failure under specified test condition right so whenever whenever they are testing the equipment they test all sort of things so this is actually withstand voltage now another thing is chopped to wave insulation level right in this case it is what happen it is determined by the test using waves of the same shape same shape means that 1.2 into your uh, that 50 uh, microsecond that the wave shape right uh, to determine the bill right so that is basic impulse insulation level right so with the exception that the wave is chopped after 3 microsecond that means it is applied but after that it is chopped at 3 microsecond so if there is no information the chopped wave level is assumed to be 1.15 times the bill for say oil field equipment for example transformer so it is assumed to be equal to the bill for the dry type insulation so some experimental setup they do and they take 1.15 times for the chopped wave right if there is no information you get they will assume that it is 1.15 times the bill for oil field equipment for example transformer right so now then critical flashover voltage they call cfo right the peak voltage for a 50 percent probability of flashover or disruptive discharge this is called your critical flashover voltage now impulse ratio for flashover or puncture of insulation impulse ratio it is the ratio of impulse peak voltage to the peak value uh, it, look listen it is the ratio of the impulse peak voltage whatever you have to the peak value of the 50 to 6 either 50 hertz system or 60 hertz system that's why i'm making it 50 slash 60 hertz voltage to cause flashover or puncture right so in other words it is the ratio of breakdown voltage at surge frequency to breakdown voltage at normal system frequency because when you are considering that is the ratio of impulse peak voltage right so basically it is a breakdown voltage at the surge frequency to the breakdown voltage at normal system frequency this is that called impulse ratio so this is theory only not numericals but you have to know all these things right now insulation next is insulation coordination this is quite important so insulation coordination is the process of determining the proper insulation level of various components 
in a power system and their arrangement. So, in other words it is the selection of an insulation structure that will withstand the voltage stresses right to which the system or equipment will be subjected together with the proper surge arrester. Actually in this uh, course lightning arrester will not cover right, but you have the if you go to uh, any power station or uh, substation you will find lightning arrester is there right. So, that is why in other words it is the selection of an insulation structure that will withstand the voltage stresses to which the system or equipment will be subjected together with the proper surge arrester. That means, uh, particularly this uh, maximum switch A or impulse or surge comes due to the lightning stroke. So, that is why the lightning arrester is uh, designed in such a fashion such that it can protect the equipment and they when they when they um, design all sort of thing they co consider all the worst cases accordingly that uh, surge arrester rating will be determined such that it can protect the uh, you know equipment in the say substation for example say right. This process is determined from the known characteristic of voltage sources and the characteristic of surge arresters right. So, different type of your uh, uh, your what you call lightning arresters are that but that is beyond the scope of this course. Now, there are three different voltage stresses to consider when determining the insulation and electrical clearances requirement. First thing is for the design of high voltage transmission line. One is the 50 or 60 hertz power voltage, lightning surge voltage and switching surge voltage. Different type of switching is there in the literature also, but I have skipped those things then it will consume more time for this, but whatever basic uh, the things are there whatever actually we need to learn those things only we will see that. So, lightning surge voltage and switching surge voltage, but this lightning surge voltage is a very severe one. Therefore, insulation for transmission system must be chosen after a careful study of both the transient and power frequency voltage stresses on each insulation element. So, one has to but insulation is a you know I mean uh, it is a we, we power comes, uh, but there are many technical things are there and this insulation is one of, one of the main thing right to particularly the protect from the fault from this kind of lightning stroke or switching surges right. So, those can those kind of thing insulation plays a significant role. So, in general lightning impulse voltage have the highest values and the highest rate of voltage rise. So, lightning stroke is the severe one among all among all of this right. So, therefore, a properly done insulation a coordination provides the following the assurance that the insulation provided will withstand all normal operating stresses and the majority of abnormal ones. That means, whatever insulation you make that it will withstand the normal operating stresses right as well as ab majority of abnormal ones. I told you that it may be switching surges, lightning surges or some fault right. So, all abnormal it will sustain then that efficient discharge of over voltages due to the lightning and switching surges as well as other your what you call internal causes. So, that also efficient discharge of over voltages due to the lightning and switching surges as well as other internal causes. So, all these thing insulation has to sustain right it has to withstand all sort of thing. Number 3 is the breakdown will occur only due to the external flashover there is a possibility of breakdown due to the external flashover right. And second thing is that uh, the positions at which breakdown take place will uh, your will be higher breakdown may cause no or uh, no or comparatively minor damage. If there is a breakdown also the damage should be minor right, but occasionally uh, occasionally it happens uh, your what you call for example, uh, when I was listening some lecture from renowned person say when uh, it is a very interesting thing. Suppose when you are testing suppose you have tested say uh, 200 equ same equipment say to uh, say up to uh, 200 numbers 200 numbers right as soon as when you are testing you find uh, that your testing is ok, but after uh, suppose 200 the same equipment right and uh, but after the testing you do not know out of the 200 that one or two might have got damage, but you do not know because when you are testing it was ok. So, these are called hidden kind of fault in that equipment. So, there is a there is a possibility of that thing also right. So, but anyway when we test uh, at the time we found everything is a clear, 
but we do not know maybe out, out of several uh, same equipment maybe one or two have become defective after the test that is not because we are not testing after that directly we are going for your installing that right. So, these are called hidden fault, but we will not discuss about those things. So, thus the insulation coordination actually involves the following first thing is the determination of line insulation, selection of the bill value and insulation levels of other apparatus and selection of lightning arresters. This lightning arrester will not uh, study in this course, but the selection of we have to design that proper rating of the lightning arrester. So, for transmission line say up to 345 kV the line insulation is determined by lightning flashover rate only, but if it is above uh, <laughs> at 345 kV the line insulation may be dictated by either switching such consideration or by the lightning flashover rate. Right. So, because voltage level is very high, so insulation level whatever you see it will be dictated by switching surge condition consideration or by the lightning flashover rate. Right. So, that uh, actually they are testing at that uh, you know how long that insulation can sustain at that uh, your what you call at that voltage level. Uh, uh, you I do not know whether you have seen that uh, insulation of transformer winding or not how they how they make the insulation for the transformer winding. Uh, if you have anything you can see one open transformer uh, winding and each winding how they are insulated right then you will be you will have some good ideas about insulation thing insulation plays a very significant role so above 345 kb switching surges become the major factor of flashover consideration and will more likely control the insulation design so if voltage level is above 345 kb say then of course, switching surges become the major factor in flashover consideration right. So, now the probability of flashover due to a switching surge is a function of the line insulation characteristic and the magnitude of the surges expected right. So, the number of insulators employed may be selected to keep the probability of flashover from switching surges very low. So, all these factors actually you have to consider. Now, switching surge impulse insulation strength is based on test that have been made on simulated towers. So, all sort of test you have to make it right switching surge impulse insulation strength is based on test that have been made on simulated towers. So, all sort of before you uh, before you uh, put it in uh, you know uh, in, uh, installation that you have to consider that all sort of factors all sort of testing just directly manufacturing and you are not putting it after that you have to test it whether it can sustain or not. All, all those all those high voltage stresses. Now, an extra high voltage levels and increase in insulation length right does not provide a proportional increase in switching surge withstand strength. That means, just uh, just like uh, in increasing the insulation length does not mean that proportionally it will increase the switching surge strength. This is due to the electric field distortion caused by the proximity of the tower surfaces and is called the proximity effect since the proximity effect is not related to the lightning impulses. So, switching surge considerations dictate the insulation values at the extra high voltage level. So, at the extra high voltage level switching surge uh, thing is the main concern for the insulation. The maximum switching surge level used in the design of a substation is either the maximum surge that can take place on the system or the protective level of the arrester that is lightning arrester which is the maximum switching surge the arrester will allow into the station. So, you have to design that uh, lightning arrester in such a fashion that it can maximum switching surge that the arrester can allow some current rating you have to choose different type of arresters are there. So, these are the significant thing, but I have seen in substation that lightning arrester also due to that heavy lightning stroke I have seen that even arrester also lightning arrester also failed this I have seen in the past right. Uh, somewhere in the substation we found due to that due to that arrester failure some other equipment also got damaged. So, one has to be very careful for designing all sort of thing particularly to protect the or protect all the equipments that is due to your um, uh, due to your lightning stroke switching surges etcetera right. Therefore, the coordination of insulation in a substation means the selection of the minimum arrester rating applicable to withstand 50 or 60 hertz voltage and the choice of equipment have an insulation level that can be protected by the arrester. 
So, arrestor design lighting arrestor selection is main important in substation right. So, transient network analyzer can also be used to you know, study the switching surge level that can take place at the substation right. The result may be used to determine the determine and coordinate proper imp proper impulse insulation and switching surge strength required in substation apparatus. If you go to any substation you will find this lightning arrestors are there right and you will say uh, once you visit just apparently from the distance you do not know you go you go to go and see all these things like lightning arrestors then CT that is current transformer then potential transformer how the current transformers are connected then the insulators then the transformer circuit breakers each and everything and uh, 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 one can learn right. So, distance between the uh, arrestor location and the protected insulation affects the voltage imposed on insulation due to reflections look so many things are there right. So, the severity of the surge depends on how well the substation is shielded right that means you have to protect the substation insulation level of the substation structure and the incoming lying insulation. So, all these things one has to consider one is that insulation level of the substation structure and the incoming line insulation. For a travelling wave coming into a dead end station that is coming at the substation end right, right. Uh, so, dead end station the discharge current in the arrestor is determined by the maximum voltage that the line insulation can allow right. So, whatever is the maximum voltage or stress that line insulation can allow based on that only arrestor your what you call the lightning arrestor current is determined right by the surge impedance of the line and by the voltage characteristic of the arrestor. Right. So, therefore, the discharge current of an arrestor just I am writing can be expressed as it is generally given as V is equal to I arrestor lightning arrest is equal to 2 V minus V A R upon J C that is V actually is equal to magnitude of your incoming surge voltage and V A R is arrestor terminal voltage. So, this way therefore, this uh, uh, your I A R is the arrestor current V is the magnitude of incoming surge voltage, V r is arrestor terminal voltage and Z c is the surge impedance uh, of the line. So, figure 17 shows the insulation coordination, figure 17 I will show you shows the insulation coordination between an oil field equipment for example, transformer and a surge arrestor right. The arrestor impulse power cover voltage is compared to the chopped wave test level of the transformer. A more meaningful comparison is to compare the arrestor spark, uh, spark over with the wave front test. That means, this is that uh, your this is actually uh, uh, this is figure it is figure 18 actually it should be figure 18 this is figure 18 right. So, in this case if you look into this that your wave front this is that wave front withstand voltage right. So, next is may be it is reaching to your what you call at some uh, withstand voltage time curve of equipment then this one is the chopped wave withstand and this is the bill the full wave withstand and this curve is discharge voltage characteristic of the arrestor right. This is wave front spark over this voltage this side is voltage in per unit this side the time in um, your uh, microsecond this is the impulse voltage wave rising it is rising and this is your maximum uh, voltage uh, discharge this point because if you look in the curve this is the maximum voltage discharge and this is the discharge voltage characteristic of the uh, your arrestor. So, this is the minimum margin of the protection scheme this gap is the minimum this is the withstand voltage time curve of equipment this is a chopped wave withstand right at this point suppose wave is chopped. So, this is a chopped wave withstand and this is a wave front withstand. So, this is actually figure 18 this is this is illustration of insulation coordination between oil field equipment and surge arrestor this is based for the transformer right. So, all these things one has to your one has to your uh, understand here not much mathematics here only little bit theory and understanding. So, thank you very much we will be back again.